Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, House Robber 2. Alright, so this is part of the House Robber set of questions. So I did solve a few of them earlier, so do check that uh, out if you're interested. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, the thief is yet again trying to steal money. And over here, actually, there is only one entrance to this area. And that entrance is going to be called the root. Besides the root, each house has one and only one parent house. So we kind of come up with two things over here. So uh, the robber has to enter from the root, okay? So in this case, he would have to enter at three. In this case, he would have to enter at three as well. Okay, and one more thing is that each of the houses has only one parent house. Perfect. So after a tour, the smart thief, uh, thief realized that all houses in this place forms a binary tree. So in simple words, we're given a binary tree. Okay, so it will automatically contact the police if two directly linked houses were broken into on the same night. Determine the maximum amount of money the thief can rob tonight without alerting the police. All right, so the question is still the same. We are given this house, the house. So we're given a set of houses. In this case, the houses are in a binary tree format, okay? And uh, we have to start off at the head root node and we're gonna work ourselves down. But as we're going down, so let's say we end up stealing at the root node. So let's say we steal at three. And in that case, what's gonna happen is we cannot steal at any of its children, right? And the reason for that is because those are the houses uh, that like it says over here are directly linked to it, okay? So in this case, we cannot steal at two or at three. So let's take another example. Let's say we did not steal at three. So if we did not steal at house number three, then in that case, we could steal at house number two or house number three or even both of them, okay? So hopefully you understand what the question is asking for. And now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go into this a little bit more in depth and kind of step by step to understand what the question is. Actually, before we do that, just uh, let's just really quickly look at this example over here. So we have this binary tree, three, four, five, one, three, one. So uh, over here, what the robber did is to, he stole at house number four and house number five, and that gave him the largest profit. So I will be looking at the exact same tree and look at different or other probabilities that we could have taken. Okay, so this over here is the exact same tree uh, as what I showed you earlier. So we're gonna start off at the very root or at the root node, okay? So the root node has a value of three. What that's telling us is that we're gonna get $3 if we steal from that house. But if we steal over here, so for representing a steal, I'll use S, and for representing uh, not stealing, I'll do NS, okay? So in this case, if we steal at three, we cannot steal at four and five, because if we do that, we're gonna get the police called on us, okay? So what that basically is telling us is that at each step, we have two options. So the options are pretty simple, to steal or not to steal, right? So the options, are pretty straightforward. And if we end up stealing over here, that means we cannot steal at its children nodes. So that's one thing that we want to keep track of. We want to keep track of, did we steal at the parent node? Okay, so parent node stolen. So we want to know whether or not we stole from the parent node. So if we did not steal from the parent node, then we could steal at that certain node. But if we did steal at the parent node, then in that case, we cannot steal there at all. Okay, so let's just kind of run this through, uh, kind of simulate through how this process is gonna work. And let's start off at our root node. So at the root node, uh, before that, we actually wanna see what its parent's value is. Uh, actually, to be more clear, what we wanna know is the fact that, did we steal from whatever child's parent? So in this case, three does not have a parent. So in that case, we don't need to worry about it, okay? So in this case, we're just gonna say false, right? False kind of standing for the fact that we did not steal from its parents. So since it is false, we have two options. We can either steal or we can not steal. It is completely up to us. And what we're going to end up doing is we're gonna try out both of the options, okay? Since there is no parent and we are at the root node, we're gonna try them both out. So let's first try out when we actually end up stealing, okay? So if we steal what is going to happen, then in that case, we're going to have the value three, right? Because when you steal, you're going to take away whatever value is over here. So that means we have three over here. Okay, so we got three, but how do we get the total value? So the total value over here is going to be plus, and we're gonna call this recursive function 
on the left node, and we're going to call it on the right node. So what exactly does this mean? So what has basically happened is that we're stealing over here. We're stealing at three. So we're accounting for that at the okay, for the hum amount of money that we ended up stealing. So we got three dollars. Okay. But now what we're going to do is we're going to call this function recursively on the left child and on the right child. But the difference here is when we call it, we're going to have a value of true. Now, what does this value true represent? So in simple words, true is telling us that the parent has been stolen from. Okay. So in this case, we are stealing. Okay. And since that is the case, the children cannot be stolen from. Since three has been stolen from, you cannot steal from the children. So that means you cannot steal at four, you cannot steal at five. So keeping that in mind, since you cannot steal in both of them, what's going to end up happening is that uh, we won't be able to make a robbery. So what exactly are we going to choose? So now, since we cannot do anything here, all we're going to do is we're going to call, call this function again, but now we're going to call it on its children. So now we're going to call the same function on one, and on three. Okay. So when we're calling it on one, we're going to give it an attribute or a value of false. And the reason we're giving it a value of false is because its parents have not been stolen from. So that means that we could steal from here. Now, since it does have a value of false, this again gives us an option of either stealing or not stealing. So we have to look at those options again at each of these nodes. And that same goes uh, for over here. Okay. But over here, these are the leaf nodes. So in that case, we're just going to end up stopping. Okay. But what exactly is happening over here? So we're going to keep going down through this and we're going to end up with some sort of value for whether we stole at the root node three. But we also need to consider the other condition, which is when we do not steal. Okay. So when you do not steal, we will not be taking in the value three. So in this case, what we're going to end up doing is we're just directly going to call our function on the uh, left and the right node. So I'll just change the color. So we're going to call our function on four and on five. But now when we are calling our function on the left and the right uh, children, in this case, it's going to have a value of false. So that means that we did not steal from the parents. And basically what that allows us to do is that we can steal at four or we can not steal at four. So now if we do end up stealing at four, for example, that means we cannot steal at one and three. Okay. And in this case, it doesn't matter if we steal at four or if we don't steal, because at the end of it, uh, over here, you would get a value of four. And if you don't steal, you would get a value of three plus one, which is four. Okay. So, uh, hopefully you did understand how this works and how each time, uh, if the above parent did not get stolen, then in that case, we have a choice between uh, not stealing and stealing. But if the about parent did get uh, stolen from, then in that case, we have no choice but to not steal. So kind of using that rule, we're going to recursively call our helper function. Okay. So it should be pretty easy to understand and I'll just go through it step by step. So I'm pretty sure you'll understand it in the code as well. All right. So I will go through this step by step and it should be pretty easy to understand. Okay. So what we're going to do is over here, we're going to have a helper function. So this is the function that we're going to be calling recursively. So what are the arguments that we're going to give our function? So the first thing is that we want to know what node are we currently on? So for that, we're going to have an argument called the node and we're going to have one more argument. And the reason we have this argument is to know whether the above or the parent is a uh, robbed or stolen from or not. So in this case, we're just going to call it parent. Uh, underscore stolen. Okay. So if it is true, we're going to assume that the parent got stolen from or else it did not. Okay. So in the very beginning, uh, what we're going to do is we want to check whether the parent got stolen from or not. Okay. So if parent underscore stolen, so that means that uh, we did steal from parent. Okay. And over here, we would end up doing something. And the other condition is once we come over here, that means we did not steal from the parent. Okay. So these are kind of our two conditions and let's see what goes into each of them. So let's start off with, we did steal with the parent. So when you did steal with the parent, you have no option, but to not steal at the current, uh, node. So the only option you have is not to steal. So since that is our only option, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to return 
And the value we're going to return is we're going to call our helper function. And this time we're going to call it on its left node. So the left node of whatever it is to our node. So node.left. And over here, the parent stolen value is going to end up being false, okay? So false, and the reason for that is because the current node's parent is, the current node's parent is stolen from, so that means we cannot steal right now, but its child will be uh, able to steal, okay? So that is one thing. And now we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna add this value, but we're gonna do it for everything on the right side. So node.right, perfect, okay? So we have this and that's pretty simple. That's it. Uh, that's all we need for if parents are stolen from. But now we did not steal from the parents. So over here, we are given a choice. And the choice that we're making over here is to choose between stealing or not stealing, right? And we still have that option because if we steal current at whatever node we're currently on, we cannot steal at the children node. So we wanna try out all of the possibilities. So since we have this, we wanna try out both of them. So let's just uh, initialize a value for if we stole, okay? So let's have something called steal, and this is the condition that we steal at the current node. Okay, so let's say we do end up stealing at the current node, so what is the value going to be? So the value over here is going to be whatever the value is of the current node, so we have to add that node.val, and now we're gonna call our helper function on the left and right children, okay? So uh, add it, so node.left. But now in this case, we did steal from the parent, so this is going to end up being true. And this over here is also going to end up being true, okay? So we have that, and now we're gonna look at our second condition, which is not stealing at the current node. Okay, so uh, not stealing. And over here, what is the value going to be equal to? So since we are not stealing, it is going to be exactly the same as what is over here. So let's copy this, and the values are going to be false since we did not steal over here. Okay, so now what exactly do we end up returning over here? So the value that we are going to end up returning is going to be whatever the maximum is between stealing and not stealing. And the reason we're returning the maximum is because we want to be able to steal the maximum amount of money, okay? So that should be it, okay? Now, uh, we just have a base case that we want to take care of. So what if we end up reaching to the child, which we will, right? We will end up reaching one of the children nodes. And to kind of uh, stop our recursive function at that point, we're going to check whether the node even has a value. So if not node, that means if the node has a value of none, then in that case, we can just return zero, okay? So uh, this is the base case. This is if the above parent did get stolen from, and this is the case where we did not steal from the above parent. So we could do one of two things, which is steal or not steal, and we're gonna end up returning the maximum between those two. All right, so now the last thing that is left to do is calling our helper function. So we're going to return and we want to call our helper function. So we're going to start off at the root and in the very beginning, the value is going to be false. Okay. Since at the root, we have an option between stealing and not stealing. Okay. And one more thing that you could add, I'm not going to be doing it. So you could add memoization. So basically what that means is uh, over here, we're looking at a really small binary tree, but you can kind of imagine once we get a really big binary tree of some sort, you will be repeating the same calculations over and over again, which is nothing else but just a waste of time. So to kind of keep track of that, we could do one of two things. You could have a dynamic DP array. So you could have one area which represents whether where you're stealing and another area where you're not stealing, and you would end up choosing the maximum between them. And that's one way to do it. And another thing that you could do is you could use the concept of memoizations, which is basically you're storing the value somewhere. And when you need to use it, instead of performing the calculations again, you will just go and get that value directly. All right, so to kind of do that, uh, we can use one of the decorators or uh, sorry, uh, function. We can use one of the decorators. So uh, this comes from the func tools library in Python. And this is known as the LRU cache. 
So if I'm not wrong, LRU stands for least recently used or last recently used. So anyways, the purpose, uh, this is going to cache our values. In other words, it's going to store them. And uh, over here, we're going to write none. So none over here refers to the maximum size of the LRU cache. Okay, so if you run this, uh, it should get accepted. So uh, hopefully you did understand the basic idea behind this. This could further be optimized, but my whole point with this video is to kind of make you understand how we can go about uh, using recursion to solve this question. And finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know what you thought about the video and...